You have a limited liability company, maybe you're a single member LLC, maybe it's a multi-member LLC. Do you have an operating agreement? Because if you don't, you could be in serious jeopardy. In this video, I'm going to cover seven critical provisions that every LLC operating agreement needs in order to ensure that its members are fully protected and the company is fully protected as well. All right, let's get started. Okay guys, not only am I gonna cover seven essential provisions, but as we get through this at the very end, I'm gonna give you a link where you can have access to download these custom provisions that I'm gonna be talking about. Yeah, I've actually taken the provisions that I use in my operating agreements and I'm gonna make them available to you at the very end so you can download those. If you already have an operating agreement, you can look at ways to incorporate these provisions into your own operating agreement to get the protections I'm gonna be talking about here, because I think when I get done, you're gonna realize how important this is to protecting yourself and your limited liability company from lawsuits. Okay, so the first provision that I think is extremely important is what we call our capital contribution provision. Now, what does that mean? It means that you are documenting the money or assets that you're contributing to your LLC. And this really leads to creditor protection. And it's something that a lot of people don't realize. They think if I just set up an LLC and I can just put money into the bank account, I don't need to document this anywhere. Well, you should document any contribution you make as a member to your LLC because it will protect you in the event of a lawsuit. What I mean by that is that by having a documented what assets you've contributed to the company, you're showing that, hey, these are the only assets I've put in here, and they're the only assets that would be available to a creditor of the company. When you don't have that, you leave open this door as to what's the company's assets or what are personal assets. And so we want to specifically identify that these assets exist in the company and those are the only assets available to a potential creditor. And this also helps it with attempts to pierce the corporate veil. Because a lot of times the way people run their LLCs, and I've seen this, they, you know, they need money, they just throw some money into the account. Well, when you start doing that, just putting money in the account when you need it or taking it back out haphazardly and you're not documenting this, then you, again, you're opening the door that if your LLC was sued, someone could use a veil piercing argument to pierce the veil of that company and come after you individually. And the argument would essentially be, hey, you disregarded the form. We don't know where you end and the business begins. Now, the second thing about this type of provision that's important is that if you're in a multi-member LLC, you want to be keeping track of the ownership percentages. And many operating agreements state that a member, their uh, right to distributions is based upon their capital contributions. So if you have three members in your LLC and you didn't document what everyone contributed, it could be presumed that it's an equal distribution, but reality is one person only put in 10% of the assets and the other two put in 90. And your intent was, is that the person that put in the 10% only receives 10%. So what this is going to do for you is to put down in a clear line in the sand that, hey, you only get 10%. And it's also going to help prevent future disputes amongst the members as to who's entitled to what. So if you ever get crossways with your members and they try to assert that they were entitled to a greater percentage of the profits, well, by documenting what you've been contributing to the company, you can go back and show you're only entitled to what you've put in. If you've only put in 10%, you only get 10%. And I've seen this come up many times in uh, joint venture LLC arrangements where two of the members are contributing a lot more money and the third member doesn't have the funds to contribute, but they still think that they're entitled to one third of the profits the way the company was originally set up. So those are the reasons why you need this clause in your operating agreement. Okay, the next critical clause is your management structure. All right, so in an LLC, you need to specify who can make decisions on behalf of that limited liability company. Now, you might be wondering, well, if it's my LLC, they should just know that. How are they gonna know that? When I mean, when I say they, a third party, let's say you're closing and title wants to know whether or not you can sign off on the deed on a property that's held in the LLC name. They're gonna ask for a copy of the operating agreement. If you don't have one, that's gonna delay your closing. So by having an operating agreement where you clearly define who can sign off on documents and what their capacity is, you're gonna be able to get your deals done much quicker and it's gonna create less confusion with the third parties that you're going to be working with going forwards. Key provision. 
The third clause has to do with distributions. And a distribution clause is extremely important because what it does is it determines when assets are going to be distributed out of the company to the members, be it a return of capital or profits that you're making in the company. Now, why is this so important? Well, it goes towards that veil piercing argument that I talked about earlier. You don't want it to seem like you have a company where there isn't a clearly defined mechanism for you to take money out, that it's more of a personal checkbook style. You take the money out at odd times and you don't document it. That can be a real issue if your company gets sued because someone could use that against you to pierce the veil of your LLC. By having a distribution clause in there that clearly defines how distributions are going to be made. Who's going to make that decision to issue out those distributions? That's going to provide you a lot of protection in the event of a lawsuit when somebody's coming after your company. Another benefit of having a clearly defined distribution clause is that if you get sued personally and someone obtains a judgment against you, one of the things that they're going to want to do is go after your LLC if you have assets in your LLC and try to break that company or they're going to get what's called a charging order, which I'm going to be talking about. That's another important clause. We're going to get to that. So by having a distribution clause in there, clearly stating when money's going to be distributed to the members, you can help ensure that a creditor will not be able to get into the assets of the company or force you to take money out because your distribution clause will thwart those types of arguments. Okay. So the, Fourth clause is what we call operating procedures. And this is basically how your company is going to be run. That is the types of decisions, how they're going to be made. The reason why I like to put a clause in there about the, you say the business purpose and, and how the company is run is because it then helps establish that this is a separate business. You're taking it seriously and you're not running it as a sole proprietor, that it has its own separate legal existence from yourself. And again, it goes back to the veil piercing thing. So you want to show that you follow separate procedures and making decisions. You want to demonstrate that the LLC is a separate entity. And that's going to make sure you have protections in the event that that company is sued in the future. All right. Now the fifth one is one of those clauses that you hopefully would never need, but it's indemnification and limitation of a liability clause. Now, what does this mean? Well, indemnification means that if your company is sued, a lot of times what attorneys are going to do, they're going to name everyone. They're going to name the managers. They're going to name the members. Now, if your company is sued and they're coming after the company and they're coming after the members and managers, and those are always typically frivolous claims, but they want to bring those parties in because they want to get you to settle. They figure, hey, if we create enough chaos in these individuals' lives by naming them individually, they're probably going to meet our demands or, or come close to meeting our demands. Well, the way you fight back against that is by having a clause in your operating agreement that states the company will indemnify the managers or the members in the event of a lawsuit. So if they are named, this means that the company's resources can be used to cover their legal fees. Now, why is this important? Because if you don't have that clause in there and you started using your company assets to pay your legal fees, then you're going to open the door again to allow a creditor, if they get a judgment against your company, to A, possibly pierce the veil and go after you personally because now you used business assets for personal defense, or, were, or B, what they could do is this. They could say all those funds that the company used to cover your legal fees, you have to repay those. It's so simple to protect yourself here with an indemnification clause. Now, another clause you need in there is a limitation of liability. Now, the limitation of liability kind of works in the same way. And really what that does there is it states that you are not going to be personally liable for the acts of the company. So if the company is sued, you can't then go after the members and managers if you're able to get a judgment against the company because their liability is limited. Meaning the only thing I put at risk if I set up my LLC are the assets that I put into it. I agree that there is nothing else, and the company recognizes this as well in the clause, that I have to contribute to the company to ensure its business affairs are carried out, which means if it's sued and there's a judgment entered against it, you can't come after me and say, well, uh, the company only has 20 grand, but we have a judgment against it for $200,000. You member need to make up the difference. I would show my operating agreement, say, well, this clause right here doesn't provide for that. The sixth provision you want in there is a dissolution provision. And really what that means is 
how you go about dissolving out your LLC and shutting the business down. You know, you may not realize this, but having a dissolution plan really helps protect you legally. If the business is dissolved uh, haphazardly and you're not following proper procedures, you can potentially open yourself up to lawsuits from creditors or other parties you don't even know exist. I recently had a client who dissolved an LLC after he sold property. The property was held inside after he sold it to a third party. Now, he recently was sued for something that took place two years prior. That is, before he sold that property, it used to be a rental. And a tenant from two years ago is now suing him, or suing his dissolved LLC, they don't even realize it's dissolved, because of injuries they sustained when they were a tenant on the property. First he ever got notice of it. He doesn't even own the property anymore. But the key here is that the dissolution steps that he went through now are critical to maintain the protection of that limited liability company. Because if he didn't follow proper procedures in dissolving that LLC out, this would give the creditor a potential way to go after him individually. So these are essential in any type of LLC that you plan to shut down. If you're flipping real estate, if you're in rental real estate and you set them up, and then after you've sold the property, you want to shut it down, you got to have a clearly defined dissolution provision in there so it'll protect you from potential creditors that you don't even know about exist at the time in which you're dissolving the entity. All right, the last but most important provision in your LLC operating agreement is going to be your charging order provision. Now, what does this mean? LLCs, they offer two forms of liability. They offer what's called inside liability and outside liability. So inside liability, everyone gets that. That is, if you run your LLC right, you have a good operating agreement, somebody sues your company, and they get a judgment against it, the LLC is going to protect you as the owner from that liability. Now, what a lot of times what people don't realize is that an LLC also offers outside protection, meaning if the members are involved in any personal litigation and someone gets a judgment against them individually, the LLC, if properly drafted with the right types of provisions, will prevent a creditor from taking the LLC interest from you, will prevent a creditor from forcing you to distribute assets, will prevent the creditor from getting up into your business and running your business for you through the appointment of a receiver. This all comes down to the critical charging order provision clause, which states that the only remedy available to a creditor is this charging order. Now, what does that mean? That if I have a judgment against a member, then I cannot touch their company or touch their assets. The only thing I'm entitled to is any monies they decide to distribute out of their company. And so if the members take money out of their company, then I can swoop in and take those, and they're referred to as distributions. You want that in there. Now, sometimes people think, well, what good is that? I can't touch my company any longer, can't take any money out because somebody sued me, so why do I need this provision? Because I say to them, would you rather not have a company in assets or have a company with assets, but have to find a creative way to pull those assets out of the company. Once you hear it that way, everyone says option number two. So with the charging order provision, it puts a creditor in a position where they're not gonna get paid because you're not gonna be taking distributions while that charging order is in effect, but what you will be doing is taking loans or management fees out of your company because you as a manager of your company can decide how those types of I'm not going to call them distributions, payments are made to yourself and they're not going to be going to your creditor. Key provision to have in your operating agreement. If you don't have it, you better get it and put it in there. Hey, those are my seven critical provisions that you should have in every LLC operating agreement. As I've stated, here's a link right here. You can check this out, click on the link and you can go. And I have several of those provisions I've uh, prepared that I use in my operating agreements. Definitely download them and use them in your own. I wish you the very best at protecting yourself with your limited liability company. Hey guys, if you like this, this video right here, be sure to smash the like button. But if you wanna learn more about limited liability companies and how they can protect you and how you can use them in your business, I'd like to personally invite you to my tax and asset protection live stream event. It's completely free to attend. And during this one day, I am gonna go through limited liability companies, land trusts, corporations, other types of business structures as it relates to real estate investing. In fact, you're gonna be able to go on to come on to this event. You're gonna get your personal individual questions answered because I bring my entire team with me of attorneys and CPAs who will sit there and monitor the questions 
and provide real world examples back. Not only we cover the asset protection, we're also gonna be talking about taxation. How to put tons of money back in your pocket by using business entities, by using the tax code to your benefit and not the benefit of the IRS. I hope to see you there.